you, Holly. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to those watching on Zoom and Facebook. Welcome to the love and light that is Unity of Lawrence. I'm grateful to see you all here on this sunshiny first Sunday of December. Yay for that. In unity, we begin everything with prayer. Let's take a centering breath and open to the divine in all of us and listen to this prayer. On this day, we dedicate our hearts to peace on earth. We appreciate everyone's spiritual journey and the abundant blessings bestowed upon us. In unity with all who seek to express freedom, joy, and transformation, we welcome our divine inheritance as creators. In harmony with this truth, we live to the best of our ability with a peaceful mind, a peaceful heart, and a peaceful spirit. And so it is. Amen. Our prayer chaplains are trained to hold sacred space, to pray on one-on-one. -on -one. If there's anything to be held in your, in prayer, in your heart to be held in prayer, we invite you to see a chaplain following today's service at the front of the sanctuary. Today our chaplains are Betty and just Betty. Just Betty. Well, that's fantastic. <laughs> Our chaplains will also pray for you during the week. Just fill out a prayer request slip and place it in the wooden box outside the office. Chaplains can also visit in times of need. Just let the office know. All prayers are confidential. And now please rise as you're able and join Holly in singing the healing song. Thank you. 
and got some hope. Thank you, Holly, and thank you, everyone. And now, of course, it's time for our unity intentions. Please affirm with me unity's founding principle. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God, the source of all good. And now our Unity of Lawrence vision statement. United in divine love and joy, we celebrate a peaceful and abundant world for all. And now our Unity of Lawrence mission statement. We are a thriving spiritual community, sharing love, building bridges, and inspiring transformation. And now please welcome our special music guest, Steve Epler. Ep quite a few unity services now. When you guys greet each other, you greet each other. <laughs> Holy cow. I kept expecting refreshments to come out anytime, you know. <laughs> um, so about, I guess it's been six years now ago, I wrote a Christmas song. I didn't have a Christmas song. And so, um, so you know, once a year, get to play my Christmas song, right? So, um, and so to write a Christmas song, I just looked in, I thought, well, if I'm going to write a Christmas song, maybe I should go to, you know, the Bible, <laughs> right? And really read it and really understand it and, and uh, sort of look at it through a metaphysical kind of lens, as we all do. And um, so this is the story, I believe, from Luke, from the very beginning of Luke. So here we go. <laughs> Zachariah was a holy man, getting up in years. He walked the Ten Commandments, so he hadn't much to fear. His wife was Elizabeth, and she was older too. They hadn't any children, and they knew they never. Love them both, prayed outside the temple while Zachariah burning incense in fear, froze and trembled. See, an angel had appeared so real and plain as day to this level headed holy man, and he heard the angel say. You fear miracles and angels, cause that's what people do. My name is Gabriel, I have a miracle for you. But your son will be coming soon, and John will be his name. And like me, he'll foretell miracles, and Zachariah said, oh.
Now Mary was a simple girl who'd never had a bow. And Joseph was a righteous man. One day they were betrothed. The same angel came up to their home, saying, Mary, you are blessed. And scared to death, she wondered if she could stand to hear the rest. You fear miracles and angels, cause that's what people do. My name is Gabriel, and I'm a miracle for you. And your son will be coming soon, the Christ, the light, the way. And you'll teach the world the greatest truths that Mary said. the angel had it right you see and soon near Bethlehem while shepherds watched o'er their flock the angel came to them and just like those before them step stood in fear then a star exploded the night grew bright and all that they could hear Christ, the light, the way, and your mission is to love yourself and to say, oh. Well, on this Christmas day, say, oh. Thank you very much. Steve Epley, thank you very much. <laughs> Diane Silver is a pushcart prize nominated poet who seeks to tease open the scars that life layers over our hearts. She retired this year after working in journalism, politics, and higher education. Diane is a chaplain at Unity of Lawrence. Welcome, very much welcome, Diane Silver. Wow. Wow, thank you so much for the cheering and how wonderful to see all these great faces in the sanctuary and how wonderful to have everyone watching at home. I know there are some amazing people watching from their living rooms right now. Okay. So this is the first day of Advent. And Advent, as I figured out this week, <laughs> is about preparing for Christmas, counting down to Christmas, preparing for the arrival, depending on your theology, of a savior, a messiah, a way shower. And actually, as I began to think about it this week, preparing for the arrival of light to be able to see. Because Christmas comes a couple days after the solstice, which is the longest night of the year. It is the day when we have the least light, when it's harder to see. 
And so this is what I think Christmas is about. And it is appropriate that the first Sunday of Advent is about hope. Hope. So in that line, I want to start this out <clears throat> like I always do my talks. <sighs> with something important. And I'd like to start by apologizing to Tina Turner. <clears throat> okay, Tina, here we go. <clears throat> this is scary. What's hope? What's hope got to do with it? What's hope but a secondhand emotion? What's hope? What's hope got to do with it? Who needs a heart when a heart can be broken? Thank you. <laughs> I have sung in the choir here, but it's best that I don't sing on my own on a stage. And Tina Turner, oh my gosh. Tina Turner died this year at age 83. What a life, what an adventure. She was an amazing performer. And that song, by the way, is originally what love's got to do with it. I think hope works just as well. And I think Tina Turner was the queen of hope. She was, yeah, I see heads nodding. Tina Turner was the queen of hope. She started out, had success with a guy who eventually became her husband, Ike Turner. I remember in the, night to, in the 1970s listening to Ike and Tina Turner. And um, their entire life was wrapped up together. Everything she did to make a living was wrapped up with Ike Turner. She married him, and he was abusive. He was addicted to cocaine. He had all sorts of problems. He beat her. And one day in 1976, one day in 1976 when he bloodied her, she said, enough! And with 36 cents in her pocket and a mobile gas station credit card, also in her pocket, which if I'm remembering correct, in the 1970s, gas station credit cards didn't actually pay for much except gas. She had to walk across a busy highway. Imagine her walking across I-70 at the height of traffic. I don't know if I would try that. She had to walk across a busy highway to get to safety and start a new life. And you know what Tina Turner did besides believing that she as a human being was worthwhile and did not deserve to be abused and to hope that she could have a better life? She found love again. That's for certain. She married a, a nice fellow, I believe, in 2013. And she was the queen of the comeback. That song, What Love's Got to Do With It, was part of her comeback in the 80s. She did her final concert tour, her 50th anniversary concert tour when she was almost 70. And have you ever seen a Tina Tarn Turner, Turner dance on stage? She didn't just sing, she moved like she was going to blow the roof off the stadium. She did that at 70 and sold out venues all over the world. Tina Turner, the queen of the comeback, the queen of hope. Now, a couple years ago, I wrote a couple books on hope, uh, books of meditations on hope. And I like any good author. I did my due diligence, and I went online, and I looked up articles about hope. And I was shocked. By what I read, a whole bunch of stuff came up. There are people out there who are really angry at hope. They think hope is an awful idea. And it got me thinking when I read this stuff about how I feel about hope. And I know that I have had three misconceptions about hope. Three misconceptions. I don't know if you have either, but three misconceptions. One. That hope is for the sunny optimists among us. That hope is for when it's easy. Ha! Who needs hope? Who needs the hope for prosperity when they've got $10 million in the bank? 
Who needs hope for love when they're in the midst of a great love affair? Hope is for when it's hopeless. Tina Turner had to hope that there would be a better life if she walked away from everything, everything she knew. If she walked away from the only way she knew to make money, she had to hope there would be a better life if she could just get across that stupid highway. Hope is for when it is hopeless. Hope is for when the night is longest and darkest. The second misconception. This is what I found in a lot of the articles online. The second misconception about hope is that hope makes us paralyzed. That if we hope, we will just sit on our rear ends and hope, hope, hope. And do nothing. I disagree completely. It is the hopelessness. I don't even know if I can say that. Hopelessness that makes us paralyzed. That paralyzes us. It has been the times in my life when I thought I couldn't in any way possible do anything. When I thought there was no light ever going to come in the sky that I didn't act. I had to have at least some smidgen of hope in order to put one foot in front of the other. So hope doesn't paralyze us. Hope doesn't paralyze us. Hope frees us. And it's why, it's why we're sitting here talking about hope on the first day of Advent. Because we are counting down to the longest night of the year. This is when we need the most hope. And I don't know about you, but lately it feels like the world is counting down to the longest night of its existence. And I think, I think this is when we need the most hope. And I think we as a human race have the ability to do it. We can pull hope out of our hearts, hope for peace, hope for love, hope for understanding, hope for justice. We can end these wars. We can end the hatred. Hope is going to move us forward. The final misconception, and this is one I've fallen prey to a lot, is that if you hope for something and it doesn't show up exactly as you imagined, well, hope is a fraud. I mean, that's one reason why I like that song. What is hope but a secondhand emotion? What is love but a secondhand emotion? You know? Who needs a heart when a heart has been broken? Because you have to feel the hope. But here's the thing. I think just because something doesn't show up exactly like we imagined it. I mean, okay, I've got my, this idea about this house on a shore. It's a beautiful house. I can imagine the living room, the bedroom. I can imagine the view. I can imagine the wood. Oh, man, I can see the counter. Oh, I'm going to have a fireplace. But here's the problem with having a detailed picture in your mind of what you hope for. The problem is that I have limited ability to perceive. As a human being, I believe I'm a spiritual person having a material experience. As a material person, I can only see so far. I can only see, actually, I can see just a little bit, kind of to the end of the parking lot. And that's about how much I can imagine for the future. I can know in my heart that somehow, some way, the human race will stop killing each other. But I cannot tell you on this day exactly how that's going to happen. I can't tell you what the history books will say in the future about how we ended these wars, but these wars will end. Just like all wars in the past have ended. 
when we get too detailed in our imaginings, we cut off paths we can walk because we can't know everything. Is this making sense? Okay, good, good. I also like the old line from Best Exotic Marigold Hotel, where the wonderful character in there would always say, you know, things are always working out, and if they haven't worked out yet, it just means the story isn't ended yet. And I also think that's true. So how do we get to hope? It's never been easy. It's not been easy for me to get to hope. It's not very often. How do we get there? How do we get there when we're in pain, when our body betrays us, when we get ill, where it feels like our body betrays us? How do we get there when bombs are exploding? How do we get there when there is no light to see? I suggest three things. I've talked about all of them, I think, before, but I want to remind you of these. One, meditate. It really does help. The reason that I like meditation is that it makes my mind turn off for a second. It, it's a jump start to get me to stop telling myself bad things. The kind of meditation I do, whatever meditation works for you, do it. It doesn't matter. The kind of meditation I do is meditation that I learned in the Kansas Zen Center. And, of course, there's the classic Zen meditation, which I could never make work very well, where you sit quiet and you just are aware of your breath. Ooh, my crazy mind goes bananas when I try to do that. The, part, the, the technique that I use for meditation is I breathe in and I go, what is this? I tell myself silently, what is this? And I breathe out, don't know. And when I breathe in, what is this? What is this? My monkey mind goes, blah, 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 blah. you know, it tells me everything. And then my, I breathe out, don't know. And then it goes, oh, right, don't know. That helps me to do that meditation. Do whatever works for you. The second thing I do is pray. Uh, you know me, I'm a chaplain. I love prayer. Um, and what prayer does is help me align with the divine. It helps me reset my intention, reset who I want to be, reset what I want the world to be. And if I sit there and I pray that this day, may there be peace on earth, and may I really believe it will happen. Part of me begins to believe it. Do that often enough and it's going to happen. So I pray, and I like the affirmative prayer. Uh, may there be peace on earth, and may, and I know it has already happened. We just can't see it yet, but we will. Uh, that's the affirmative prayer that we teach in unity. So two things, meditate, pray. But I want to talk longer today about the third thing. And this is the idea of the practice of seeking beauty. There's a wonderful book by John O'Donohue. He is an Irish poet and philosopher, and he wrote a wonderful book called Beauty. And in it, he says, when we experience the beautiful, there is a sense of homecoming. We feel most alive in the presence of the beautiful, for it meets the needs of our soul. For a while, the strains of struggle and endurance are relieved, and our frailty is illuminated by a different light. A different light. It can be the beauty of nature. It can be the beauty of an amazing building. It can be the beauty of song, a symphony. It can be Tina Turner singing. It can be the beauty of dance. Whatever it is, seek it. For me, it is the beauty of nature. It is the visual beauty. My mother was a painter, a landscape painter, and she taught me to see, I guess, as a painter sees. And right now, I can tell you, at least from standing up here, looking out that wind, those windows, um, there are red berries. They're not quite red, maybe maroon, 
Burgundy? Mm, kind of somewhere between burgundy and red. Mm, clusters of red berries on the sun-coated branches. It's just delicious to look at. It moves my heart. It moves my soul. Once a year, uh, I grew up in Michigan, and once a year I go up and make the two-day drive up to Lake Superior, which is a long ways away, folks. Um, and it is the great inland sea. And I go up there. I do have relatives up there, and so I go and I say hello to my brother and sister-in-law. But I go up there because it releases my heart. Because I stand on the shore of this vast expanse of water, and it seems like I can feel forever. It seems as if my skin becomes porous. I am no longer a part of earth. I can feel and see and perceive beyond what is here, what is right in front of me. It is the beauty that transports me. I'm a writer. I'm a poet. I've tried to write about this. I even have a poem about it, but I don't think the words are ever there because it is the beauty that opens my heart, that jumps kick my monkey mind. It, it like, you know, monkey mind is the uh, Buddhist term. Um, I believe it's a Buddhist term for um, your mind chattering at you. You're too fat. You're too ugly. Oh, my God. You need to, to cut your hair. You need to put different makeup on. You need to be, 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 be. Yep, 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 yep. What the beauty of Lake Superior does for me, what the beauty of those gorgeous berries on that tree outside our sanctuary today do for me is snap me out of my self-hatred. They snap me out of my fear. It helps me hope. Can be music that does this. Can be a work of art. Can be anything. But it's the beauty that can open our hearts and help us go farther and help us feel the hope. So I want to end today. Okay, so I started by singing. So I'm going to end with a poem. <laughs> it's one of mine. And it's about something that happened to me when I was about 10. And this is called For the Girl. For the girl who thought Hark was the name of an angel who sang gleefully, who liked red and blue Christmas lights, but adored the green who watched every year for Kitty to curl up under the tree, who loudly sang carols with every record on the radio, while all through the house, in their separate rooms, everyone hid behind doors. She stood at her bedroom window on Christmas Eve, watched snowflakes shine in the streetlights glow as the snow fell soundless, to the sidewalk below. She pressed her palm to the window pane cold, whispered fervently to a God she didn't know, please, please, let there be more than this. And the sheetrock on the studs, the wood on the floor, the tiles overhead replied, one day, sweet child, you will fly. That was a moment of hope. I didn't even know it then. When I stood at that window 60 years ago in that suburb of Detroit and felt despair because it wasn't just that I was seemingly alone in my family. It was that my father was an alcoholic and he was violent. And I didn't even know if I was going to live to become 18. I saw no paths out of where I was. I was 10 years old. Where was I going to go? 
Where was I going to run? I didn't even have 36 cents on a mobile gas station card to put in my pocket. I didn't know what to do. I was in complete despair. And yet I stood at that window. And I looked out. And I think this poem is a failure in some ways. Because I have yet to be able to put into words what it looked like looking out that window. It was beautiful. Big. You know, have you ever seen the big fat flakes of snow? Big white flakes of snow. And they're just tumbling and swirling and swirling down. And they're filling the air. And the street light was shining off them. And each white globe of snow shone. It was alive. It was a sun, a healing sun. And I do have to tell you that the last stanza of that poem, nothing spoke to me in that room. I did not hear words from the tiles or the sheetrock. That's kind of a poetic, wave hanging, hand waving kind of thing, metaphorical. But I felt like everything in that room spoke to me. Everything outside spoke to me and said, Someday, sweet child, you will fly. It's okay. Feel the hope. And you know what? 60 years later, looking back on everything that I have done in my life, everything that has happened to me, everything that brought me to this moment and this wonderful place, Unity of Lawrence, I have flown. I continue to fly. And so do you. So do you. Every one of you in this room is both has hope and is the hope of this earth. Every one of you at home, we are the hope. What does hope have to do with it? Everything. Thank you. meant to do this before I left the stage. These are pretty berries. <laughs> Broken lock, the empty chair, moving target, the lock of hair, the pain that's good, the pain that's bad, the open heart, the smile that's sad. This illusion is real, we all know how you feel, but we all will be healed, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Saturday, things they say, pile of books, the open bay, the fall of Rome, the upper class, purple heart, the midnight mass, when you lose all control and you're lost and alone, there's a million ways home. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
Well, the box of rocks is so dumb. The view from here to kingdom come. Baby's breath, nightingale, strength to win, strength to fail. This illusion is real. We all know how you feel, but we all will be healed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And when you lose all control and your life stand alone there's a million ways home hallelujah 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 As we prepare ourselves for meditation, I would like each of you to pick one beautiful place to go to during this meditation, place of your choosing. If you aren't thinking of one right now, join me on the beach. Big, beautiful body of water. So everyone take a deep centering breath in, out. In, out, stand in this place, this place of beauty. Open the pores in your body, open your eyes. Open your ears, open your nose, smell the sweetness, hear calm, hear a calm beauty. Open your eyes to this light, this light that is the most shining thing you have ever seen. This brilliance flows into your heart, your mind, the warmth. It is so beautiful. Feel the beauty in every part of your body. Feel the beauty. See the light. Stay in that moment. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. You are a material being, having a material experience, but you are of the spirit. You have more power than you even know. You are a joy to this earth. Everyone in this sanctuary, everyone at home, there are no exceptions. You are the hope and the joy. And so it is. Wiggle your toes. Wiggle your fingers. And know that all is well. Thank you for being here today.
There is freedom within. There is freedom without. Try to catch the deluge in a paper cup. And there's a battle ahead. And many battles are lost. But you never see the end of the road when you travel with me. Hey now, hey now, don't dream it's over. Hey now, hey now, when the world comes in and they come, they come to build a wall between us. You know they won't win. Now I'm towing my car. There's a hole in the roof. My possessions are causing me suspicion, but there's no proof. And in the paper today, tales of war and of waste, but you turn right over to the TV page. Now I'm walking again to the beat of a drum and I'm counting the steps to the door to your heart. Well, only shadows ahead, barely clearing the roof. Get to know the feeling of liberation and release. Hey now, hey now, I'm dreaming. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Diane. Sorry, somehow I've managed to get myself lost. Oh, here we go. As our ushers come forward for our time of thanks, I invite you to join me as we hold our gifts to this community in our hands and love in our hearts. Let's affirm together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. As the love offering is being collected, let's join Holly in singing, We Three Kings.
As our ushers come forward, here is our prayer of thanks. Please listen. We are grateful and we bless the flow of good that supports our unity community. We bless the givers who give their time, talent, and treasure. We stand in the knowing that the flow of good goes forth only to return again and again, and so it is. Amen. A special welcome to our guests today. Thank you for joining us. If you would like more information, please pick up a welcome packet from the foyer. Sunday Lunch Bunch is meeting at Papakino's, 837 Massachusetts Streets. Everyone is welcome. We are remaining after service today for the Hanging of the Greens. Plan on staying to help decorate the sanctuary for the holiday season. Light refreshments will be downstairs. Remember, Open Meditation with Phil Roger meets on Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m. Lessons in Survival with Francesca will meet next, next today at 4 p.m. Oh, next Sunday at 4 p.m. So Survival Lessons with Francesca will be next Sunday at 4 p.m. Holiday Projects, we're sponsoring two programs we are sponsoring two programs this holiday season. Firstly, the Willow Domestic Violence Center needs $25 gift cards to Walmart, Target, and Kohl's to purchase gifts for their families. Please give these to Kathy in the office. Secondly, Dare Drop-In Center is accepting donations of new winter gloves, hats, and wool socks for guests who use their services. More information on these community services is provided in the foyer. Please have all donations delivered to the church by Thursday, December 14th, Many thanks for helping those in need in our community. The Drumming Circle will be meeting next Sunday, December 10th at 1.30 p.m. The 2023 Advent booklets are available and free in the foyer. Pick yours up today. And while you're at it, you can pick up your December bulletin. Save the date. Friday, January 19th at 7 p.m., we will be hosting a Crystal Bowl concert with Jeff Klein, more information in the foyer. Join us next Sunday when Cindy Smarsh brings us the message, Peace, an Inside Job, special music with artist Ramberg. And now it's time to rise as you're able and sing the peace song. <laughs> 